Hello friends, this is self-critical automaton, the world's least impactful Red X the Boxer shipper. And uh, it's time for the final episode of my Let's Play of Transistor, one of the best and most beautiful games that are art, that aren't explicitly art games. And um, before we start, I need 30 seconds to just mention that my next Let's Play will be Dishonored, and uh, so this episode's going up on a Monday. At some point in the rest of that week, there will be a bonus episode where I'm going to critically analyze the various paintings used in the game. And um, then I'm going to take a little bit of break for the rest of the week before starting the Dishonored Let's Play the week after. So the first episode of Dishonored is going to be on the 5th of April uh, 2021 for anybody watching far in the future. Um, and yeah, that's really all I need to, all I need to mention. So. Let's dive right in by talking to this irritating computer screen again. Actually, the final little vista moment is over here. Everything around us, washing away. Must be the place. Hi, Royce. If you can hear me. Well, welcome. welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, well, well. Come, come in, come on. Inside my studio. I'm quite, quite unarmed, as you can see. see. And, and it's safe, safe in here, relatively safe. safe. Yeah, at least for now. Here's the thing. Now, if the transistor doesn't go back in its cradle, then why? You and I both, well, we just won't be anything anymore in a little while. You, me, and the rest of this town. So, please, don't let my work go to waste. I'm being reasonable. Now, full disclosure. Full disclosure here, which is, I am one, positively certain 100% that this will work. Which is, transistor plus cradle equals no more process. No funny business, okay? We'll just take it one thing at a time. One topic at a time. He sounds like a tech billionaire with a mouthful of peanut butter. Look, if this was, if this was all just some kind of ruse on my part, I mean, how base? Why would I lead you all this way? I'll level with you, yes, I would like it back. I'd very much, if you must know, but you know what? At this point, I would settle for not being wiped out of existence. I would happily settle for that. The longer you wait, the more irritated he gets in his uh, little dialogues. Okay, so now I'll wait. I'm not sure how if many there are, but he does just keep on going. Wait. But the process, the process, as you can see, patience isn't one of its virtues. Always busy. Busy, busy, busy. This is it then. You know what you have to do. What have we got to lose? It's why we're here. Of course, if you wait here, the boxer just kind of... Came all this way for a reason. Keeps on giving you encouragement infinitely to do this. Let's just get it over. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get it over with. Look, no matter what happens, just... I love you. You know that, right? It's time. Bye for now. But I will see you again. I will see you again. Contained it, so 
the town is going to be all right. It's just, well, someone's going to have to rebuild. But we flew a little close to the flame there, so now we're here, not there. We're stuck. And unfortunately, the only way back that I'm aware of is, well, unpleasant. So let's get this over with. So here we are, time for the final boss fight. Um, I want to mention briefly that I really enjoy the way that at this final moment of the game, um, they step over from kind of metaphor and dive into kind of just having the symbolism be literal and present within the space. So we've gone from having these mentions of the country as a kind of a, a metaphor for death or for being removed from, from public life in some way. And now we see, like, additionally, we are in the country, but we're on the border of the country because the way that the uh, giant transistors in the background evoke a, a, a towering cityscape is is really pleasing to me because it's a kind of a literalization of the metaphor, if you will. Please don't. It's... Oh, God, what am I saying? Anyway, uh, basically, the fascinating thing about it is that it is the city. The sword is the city. So within the sword, we see the city as the sword, as this vast monolithic thing in the distance. Um, it's just really pleasing to me that they're willing to engage with symbolism because, you know, that old soapbox that I never completely climb down off of, of course, um, is all about the issue of, you know, lacking symbolism in um, pop cultural art that is consumed pop culturally. Uh, I'm not really sure what to take into the rest of this. It's nice that they give you this little opportunity to finally reassign your, um, your stuff before you go into the final fight. Is there anything useful I could put on there? Should probably switch this off as well. I forgot to read it previously. What does it say? Designation snapshot. Roll reporting. Features flash lens, reflex booster, data scrambler, some versions. Vulnerabilities, exposed cell, rear. Preferences, high dynamic range lighting. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of the archetypical nature of a, of a photographer, isn't it? Spent many, many hours staring into these unblinking eyes. Rather calming, really. The process keeps meticulous records, very re responsible. And this is sort of their bookkeeper, as near as I can tell. Now, I can't make heads or tails of those records yet, but there are timestamps. They have to be timestamps, which is how I know. In any case, the sense of feeling monitored constantly while troubling at first, I found with time it fades. That's kind of this society encapsulated. The constant surveillance. But well, it's time to fight. Who gets to go first? How about me? So this is of course the first and only time in the game where you will face an opponent who has anywhere near the same capacities and capabilities you do. What? Fortunately, that uh, particular power I slotted as a passive upgrade which lets me freely uh, deflect a first couple of attacks it comes in really really handy in this boss fight as I've been saying I'm not like mega good at video games it's not that I'm just amazing at everything but uh, this is not difficult as boss fights go um, again I don't think this game has difficulty levels but I don't seem to have any real difficulty beating Royce he's just kind of a He's a nebbish science boy. He's not built for stabbing people to death with a large fuck-off sword. However, like you, he of course has multiple uh, lives, opportunities, chances, whatever you want to call them. Of course, the transistor itself isn't a separate object necessarily. It's an expression of something that exists kind of in the nature of the world, which is why the ones that you have absorbed with your sword 
he can use those abilities too, even though he hasn't been, you know, gathering up every single half-dead soul in the entire society. And also notice these kind of humanoid entities in these server racks here. Very clearly supposed to be the various citizens of this society who have been absorbed into the sword, but... But do these server racks stretch off into infinity, comprising all of the citizens in the city who have been processed, or do they actually only house the individual citizens who have been, you know, eaten by the transistor? I always, I always kind of anthropomorphize it as eating, but it's kind of a more existential absorbing. Notice that icon on them. We've seen that once or twice other in other places in the game, and it's, I think, just the symbol that represents the country. So it's fascinating to think that in this world, they've kind of literalized their afterlife. Their afterlife actually physically exists for them to some extent, which is not an uncommon... How could the transistor be anything other than one of a kind? But I've been wrong about a lot of things here. I admit, all part of the job of having theories, being right sometimes, and also being wrong. You stuck, buddy? None of those should hit me. Oh no! I think that actually goes through the shield, which is uh, interesting. I wonder if um, enemies with the shield ability who are shielded, you can hit them with the. Uh, the damage over time effect. Okay, that hurt. <laughs> of course, um what was I saying? Well uh, anyway. So uh, the idea in kind of um, speculative fiction of a society which has this like, um, you know, a, a digital society that has upload-based afterlives, or afterlives, I guess, is uh, a pretty common idea. However, it's rarely taken as literally or to such a high extent as this, because the society is itself this kind of... Hmm, is he immune to my explosions? He is. That could be more of a problem. I might actually... Need to make us take a second crack at him. Which would be irritating, to say the least. Remarkable. How are you doing this, Red? Reading my mind? So, as I said, these server racks have the uh, icon of the country on them. This, uh, sheaves of wheat icon but um again we don't know really how literal that is or um or even that much what it means for these people i think he's immune to the explosions so this was probably a mistake to take this build i'm not sure why that is But of course, it can be both in this society, because this society is themed around digital life, but is not a literal physical world, as I've been going on about previously. Impossible. No, no one can. It can't be. God, please don't be God, please don't. Even this duel between them isn't really literal, it's more of a kind of a conceptualization of the two of them warring between their wills for the control got away. of this Red, we got away. mechanism to control their society. Now you're here. And me. And that's it. And so, here we are. The sole controlling owner of the transistor. The paintbrush of reality that can paint on the canvas of existence. Look at 
this. This whole town. I guess it's yours now. A blank canvas. And you still have the brush. Better you than the camarada. It can do anything. Or almost anything. This is the most we hear of her humming throughout the entire game. She still doesn't have her voice back. So where do you want to start? Head back to your place in High Rise. Fits of Gold Walk. Junction Chance. All the drinking joints in the canals. What are you thinking? He doesn't get it. She knows now. She's seen what she can do with it. She knows the extent of its power. She's experimented with it. But what it can't do is the only thing that matters to her. And there it is. The end of one of the best games that are art that exists, in my opinion. If you listen carefully, you can hear that they're singing in duet. This is another one of the many interesting recurring trends in Supergiant games. Ending your game with a duet between major characters. A lot of people hated this ending for fairly obvious reasons. Um, I mean, I love these credits. The the simple scenes of domesticity as we actually get their, the history of their relationship filled in and we learn a bit more about how they knew each other. But I think the people who hated this ending didn't understand what kind of narrative that they were experiencing. The people who hated this ending talk about she could have saved the world, she could have restored society. But this was never about that. Red had one goal, and one goal only. And that's one of the things about her, is that all through the game, the narrative agency is completely hers. Boxer says, you should go here, you should do that. Villains say, ah, I bet you're here for this, I bet you're here because of that reason. No, all of it's wrong. She does what she wants to do for her goals, and it never steps aside from that. That is, that um, strength of that agency is retained all the way through the narrative. She wants her boyfriend back. And if, even when with the power of a god to rewrite her reality, she can't bring him back, because once you've gone to the country, you don't come back. So she goes to him. Hey. 
it's completely in keeping with her character. But also, this is a tragedy. This was always a tragedy. They lay the groundwork for the tragedy all throughout the narrative. And one of the things about romantic tragedies is, generally speaking, nobody ever gets out alive. This is not a narrative that you're meant to take literally. Which is my regular soapbox that I always seem to climb up on. Every game I play, well not every game, some of them are very literal narratives, but... There are a lot of themes in this game and you can read a lot of things into it. I think the most obvious one is essentially an exploration of how to deal with grief. And to understand that you can't bring people back. People. When they're gone, they're gone. But there's a great deal of other things that you could read into it and other ways to interpret it. Um, I can understand why people didn't like this ending, but I, I have a fondness for bittersweet endings and... That's another thought. There's of course the um, slightly chilling component of the way the New Game Plus is set up. But um, that's besides the point I was just making, which is that this is a tragedy. You don't go into a tragedy expecting a happy ending. People have even called it, like, a selfish or immoral way to end the story, or for the character to act in such a way. But this was never about saving the world. As I've said, this was about one very specific thing. So there's a couple final things I want to uh, run through here. This is the, the end screen of the game. If you click exit to shell, uh, it drops you back to desktop and closes the game. If you click begin recur recursion, new game plus starts. And you start over from the beginning of the game with all of your abilities. New game plus tends to be, well, I'll talk about that in a second, but um, let's try beginning the recursion. We're not going to get away with this, are we? Come on, pull. There. Together again. Sort of. So I spoke a while back about what? how Supergiant as a studio have this obsession with cycles and circularity and the recursive nature of existence and the way everything happens again and again and again forever. What a night. You're still in one piece. That's all that matters. In the primary narrative of the game, this is constantly reinforced in these really delightfully subtle ways with these just little flourishes as we see the same scenes again from different angles or scenes nice. that reflect scenes that we saw already. previously. They want you back, I bet. But, um, like all of their games with New Game Plus things, uh, they actually do one of the two options that you have when you're designing a game to have New Game Plus. Very often, a New Game Plus is the so same story over again, but you get to keep your, you know, your power-ups, your level, whatever. Okay, let's go. One more deli, east of the bay. From the start of the game, all the way through the game again, but experiencing the same narrative. Um, that's kind of non-canonical what's happening. You aren't, the, ca the character isn't literally going back in time or whatever. The other way is to include that within your narrative. Your narrative includes some kind of, you know, time travel explained within the plot or some kind of existential concept of, you know, finishing the, the lifespan of the universe and the same events playing out again in a, in a subsequent Kalpa. And um, in such an instance, usually things will change on subsequent playthroughs to reflect the fact that this is not 
uh, a second sequence running through the same a second run through of the same sequence of events. It's not redoing from the beginning, but is in fact a continuation. What's, uh, what's interesting about the way they do it in Transistor is that they actually kind of gesture at both. We, it's, the story is the same, the narrative is the same. However, there are these odd little hints at it being changed, or possibly changing. We have the fact that the iconic opening line is voiced by Royce instead of by the boxer. And the mystery of what that could mean is, is never really touched on or explained or expanded on in any way. It just is what it is. There's almost no changes. And there's no real narrative explanation for why Red might be going through the same events over again. Nor even a thematic explanation, really. We're clear. But, instead of it being that first type, where nothing changes and it's just, here is a fun bonus mode so that you can play through the mechanics and enjoy it, but without, um, but with, you know, not having to level up to get the cool skills, it does change things. It changes that opening line, and it changes this tutorial where instead of the very strict tutorial you're given the first time around, it just fake bugs and breaks and lets you do what you like. After this point, there's almost no changes. I think there's maybe two or three voice lines that are different. If that, there might be genuinely no changes after this point. So I think it's really curious that they gesture at that, but then kind of completely abandon it. Anyway, that's going to be all for today. And, uh, Come check out my next Let's Play, which will be Dishonored. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. He's still interrupting me. It's an entirely second instance of the universe, and he's still interrupting me. If you like this, you can also follow me on Twitter for updates, stream announcements, and one-tweet micro-reviews. Or why not donate to me via Patreon or Ko-fi, or just share my work. Thank you so much for watching.